Mike Buck here with AK Sled Shed. I uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit today uh, about backcountry safety. Uh, one of the main number one rules of backcountry safety is never ride alone. Well, in Alaska that happens actually quite often. Uh, people travel in in remote areas of the state, back and forth between villages. A lot of times uh, people end up traveling alone. And a lot of times just for recreational riding, uh, it happens fairly often. It's really important that if you are gonna travel alone, you take some special precautions to be sure that you, uh, you know, aren't uh, injured or have some kind of accident out there and then also that you have filed a trip plan with somebody so that someone knows uh, when and where to come find you. You need to let somebody know where you're going, when you're gonna be back, and some details about uh, your trip, what kind of equipment you might have with you, and those sorts of things. It's really important too, if you're traveling alone, that you're making less risky decisions about uh, you know climbs, uh, crossing rivers and streams, uh, technical terrain. You're gonna dial it down a little bit and make sure that you're not riding at a high risk level if you're by yourself. It's really important too that you take some form of communication with you. Uh, the inReach device is a really popular device in Alaska. Uh, people take those with them so that you can have two-way communication when you're out there in the backcountry. Um, you know, I can have the app on my phone. I've got my inReach, and all I have to do is pull out my phone, and I can text my wife and say, hey, I'm going to be, uh, you know, two or three hours late. I've had some issues, that sort of thing. Or to let somebody know, um, hey, I need help. Can you come, uh, come help me out? You know, nobody wants to be that person that uh, has to call search and rescue to come get you. Uh, you know, I, I always rely on, on filing a trip plan with a friend that I know that can come out and, uh, and help me out if I have an issue. You want to make sure that if you're filing a trip plan with a friend, that you make sure and let them know that, hey, you know, you are my backup. If something happens and I'm not back by six o'clock this evening or whatever time you may put down there that, uh, you know, I may need some help and uh, may need to have you come and, and uh, give me a hand or give me a ride out or whatever. And then also, you know, with the inReach device, you do always have that option of that SOS button that you can hit and search and rescue will, will come out if you're in a really bad situation. Uh, but you know when you're out there doing a solo ride, you wanna to try to make sure that you're not uh, gonna end up in that kind of a situation where you have to have uh, a full-blown search and rescue event. So if you are traveling alone, you wanna make sure that you're carrying a little extra survival gear just in case you have a you know, if you have a mechanical breakdown and you can't fix it in the field, um, you know, you're, you're stuck either walking out of there or relying on somebody that can come in and, and give you a hand. And a lot of times you're uh, so far off the beaten path that it would be extremely difficult to uh, walk out if not impossible. So I've got a, a friend, Brian Fisher, and uh, last year, he uh, did a solo ride out of Eureka Lodge up the Nelchina Glacier and had a major uh, breakdown. And I did a little interview with him, and I hope you enjoy it. So, Brian, last year, probably almost exactly a year ago, I came up here in this, this machine, right? Yep. Was sitting here with a bunch of snow on it and no other tracks around. So I knew somebody was up here solo. Yeah, that, that was, was you. me. <laughs> they say, they say uh, never ride alone. Well, I never listened. <laughs> now, luckily, so, so tell me what happened. 
uh, my secondary helix uh, just uh, snapped the bolts off the helix. So the both sheaves came apart on the jack oh, shaft. Yeah. So no repair, no field repair. No, no sent. No. Nope. As soon as I noticed it was, there was no repairing it. I thought I blew, blew a belt, but I grabbed what my survival gear and headed down the glacier. Luckily, it was hard packed like it is today. Otherwise, I might not have got out of here as easily. So what went through your head when you knew you were screwed and you had to start walking? <coughs> Why didn't I buy an inReach? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now yeah. I have one. Right on. <laughs> um, awesome. I had uh, an aircraft that was supposed to come out looking for me um, if I wasn't back or hadn't contact somebody by five or six o'clock because you know it's light out till nine, and they could have came up and picked me off the glacier, but they got busy and spaced it out. And wow! You know, when it was so dark, you did were, you did file a trip plan with somebody? Oh yeah, I had and... several people knew where I was right. at. We had had aircraft. Yeah, and, awesome. Uh, they just when it got dark they're like oh man i hadn't heard from brian so then they started scrambling and you know getting everybody together to for rescue possible rescue mission the following day yeah because it was dark by then so and then um you know i walked walked out got down to the head of the trail they were at dumps on the river and was able to make a cell call how many miles did you walk 42 give or take a, <laughs> a quarter mile or so oh my god <laughs> 42 miles in 15 hours you are a tough I mother. broke down here at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I was <laughs> down and made a call at first light, 6.30 in the morning. Wow. I stopped at the ice cave, drank some water, hung out, and I was I thought about just hunkering down there, and then I just, no, nah, I'm going to keep going. So what is there anything that, that you added to your survival gear besides the inReach? No. No. So what what all did you have with you? For Pretty survival? much everything I have today, um, and, minus the harness. And what kind of stuff do you carry? What do you What are your like, essentials? And, and, uh, uh, plenty of rope and you know food and water and stuff like that. Obviously, yeah. um, a saw, shovel. Yeah. You know, in case. So you, you took all that stuff. I took every. With yeah, I had a twenty five pound pack when I walked out of here. Yeah. Right on. My wife grabbed it at home and went, oh, yeah. "You packed that off of there." <laughs> Wow. <laughs> but luckily the know. guys were my cousin and a, another friend of mine were unloading at Gunsight, the old Gunsight Mountain Lodge when I made the call. And yeah. so I just stayed on the river and they came down and got me, which saved me another yeah. 12, 12 miles of walking. Wow. Well, good for you. You're a tough mother yeah, to be able well, to walk that far. If, and, if you do travel um, alone, flight plan. Yeah. <laughs> and carry an in reach. Absolutely. It's worth yeah. its weight in gold. Yeah. Especially with, uh, I mean, there's a guy that's in Sheep, Sheep Mount Lodge now. He's got an R44 there, so he you can yeah. call him. He could be here in 20 minutes. Yeah, so you up. have his number in your in, Yes, in I have him, Majestic so Valley, can... and several other aircraft. Uh, yeah. I have uh, Heli Alaska that's in Palmer. Yeah. Uh, Justin, I have his number in there as well. Yeah. And talked to him several times. Yeah. Um, I've talked to all these pilots, and they said, yeah, you ever get in a problem, just, you know, Texas will come and get you. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Great. Good advice. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Don't do that again. Yeah, I'll try not to. <laughs> you travel alone, carrying in reach. Right on. <laughs> so remember, everybody, if you're traveling in the backcountry alone, dial it down a little bit. Be a little safer. Make good decisions. Carry a little extra equipment because you may have to spend the night out there. And file a trip plan with somebody responsible and carry an in reach a spot device, a sat phone, some kind of two-way communication. So be safe out there. Have a great season.